Hello, my name is Romit Chaudhary. I'm a senior lecturer in sociology at Erasmus University College in Rotterdam. And I'm delighted that my article on masculinities and transport infrastructures in the city has been awarded the best article of 2021 in urban studies. My deepest thanks to the editors for this recognition. The article is titled The Social Life of Transport Infrastructures, Masculinities and Everyday Mobilities in Kolkata. What I try to do in it is offer a feminist reading of transport infrastructures in the city. And I do this through an ethnography of how masculinities come to matter in the lives of male auto rickshaw drivers uh, in the eastern Indian city of Kolkata. Now, we know from the literature on urban infrastructures that infrastructures in cities often blend into the background of urban life and their workings are often invisible. Similarly, dominant versions of masculinity, and this is because they are assumed to be the norm, has historically escaped scrutiny. Now, there is a vast body of scholarship that has separately explored urban infrastructures and masculinities, but these two fields have not really been brought into dialogue with one another. So in my article, I show how ideas of masculinity are an invisible organizing principle of mobility, of mobility infrastructures. And I arrange this discussion along three themes, conflict, cooperation, and disappointment. Now, one order of conflict between middle class passengers of auto rickshaws and the drivers who are working class has to do with the speed of the vehicle. So passengers will fault drivers for reckless driving, for speeding, uh, even for driving too slowly. But what does speed really mean to the vehicle operators themselves? Uh, my ethnography shows that public transport vehicles have some expressive possibilities for the male driver. One way this is captured is impromptu races between auto rickshaws, and this happens while ferrying passengers. Interior lanes of neighborhoods in Indian cities are routinely used by male youth to play sports. So when auto rickshaw drivers race one another, they are collectively imagining and inhabiting city streets as a sporting ground. And by enacting such forms of play with one another, working class men exercise their claim on the city. And mind you, this is a city that is perpetually recoiling from their reach, both as a site of labor and leisure. Now, even though the relationship between passenger and driver is often conflictual, co-presence in the auto rickshaw is also about cooperation. I mentioned speedy driving. On one trip, I heard a young woman passenger restraining a speeding driver by asking him quite cheekily, brother, have you been possessed by Superman? And this led to peals of laughter all around. And even the driver's face uh, broke out in a smile. What is happening here? The heroic masculinity of a very well-known fictional character is ironically being invoked to coax the driver to slow down. On another occasion, uh, I noticed an older woman gently placing her hand on the shoulder of a young driver. And this is a driver who was honking furiously. And she told him, uh, why are you making so much noise unnecessarily, my child? In this way, uh, older women passengers can actually use a maternal vocabulary to chide speeding drivers. And this is something drivers will find acceptable, will accede to. Now, the point to note here is that such gestures of cooperation depend on a familial ideology of gender. And my point here is that everyday, the everyday life of mobility infrastructures needs to be understood in relation to ideals of the private sphere, especially the family. Again, we know from the literature on urban infrastructures that infrastructures carry the promise of progress. They are icons of modernity, of development. Now, auto rickshaw drivers' attitudes to urban infrastructures reveal quite the obverse of urban aspiration, and that is the city as a crucible of disappointment. Time and again, drivers told me that the city has remained the same. Yes, roads have improved, flyovers have been built, there are many, many more private cars, but nothing much has really changed for them. And interestingly, they pointed out that their father's struggle to provide for their families remains their struggle as well. Now, notice that urban infrastructural change is being read by male transport workers through the lens of their roles as providers for their families. Now, this demonstrates the sheer ideological force of breadwinning and how it mediates men's relationship to the city. So in this sense, physical infrastructures in the city 
are a reminder to transport workers of to working class men generally of their struggle to be good men in the sense that these men's aspirations have either remained unfulfilled or they have had to be deferred. Now we know that infrastructures produce ideals of normality in the city. My article builds on this uh, to conceptualize public transportation as a social field where how to inhabit the city is learned and performed as expressions of masculinity. Certain physical elements in the infrastructural landscape therefore come to represent constraints to working class masculinity. And here I especially mean breadwinning and the respect that accompanies breadwinning. At the same time, the social life of mobility infrastructures also allows other competencies of masculinity to be developed. And these are things such as risk taking, mastery over space, camaraderie. And in these ways, the cultural logics of masculinity inflect our everyday encounters with urban infrastructures. I end the piece with an invitation to urban scholars to study large scale urban processes through the lens of masculinities. Many thanks once again to the editors of the journal. I'm really very pleased to receive this award from Urban Studies. Thank you so much.